Hello and welcome, Michael Wolishinovich here, and in this brief tutorial, I just wanted to cover off some of the new and rather exciting features in Capture One 20.1. And before we get started, be sure to check me out on the social media links below and also my website at vibrantshot.com. So with this update, there's three main features, and um, in particular, two of them are really exciting if you are a portrait fashion or beauty photographer, or you work on uh, shots of people of any kind, uh, because they really address two of my biggest gripes with Capture One, and you will have probably seen me talk about these for a while, particularly in my previous video where I discussed um, you know, full skin retouching inside of Capture One, and those are the brush, in particular the pointer for the brush and also healing which really requires multiple healing layers and i'm happy to say that those two things have been addressed and so uh, let's go ahead and dive in and actually take a look at how they've done that uh, so this is kind of my retouched image with a black and white treatment and we've got um, a dodge and burn stack here so i've done some of the dodging and burning already on this as well as some healing uh, whereas in this one I have not. So the first thing we're going to look at is the brush itself, which you may have already noticed is actually uh, a lot more useful because the pointer has been updated to indicate the proper size of the brush that we are using. So if we use our square brackets and go up or down, we can see the actual pointer across its entire size range as opposed to just to some limit cutoff, where before uh, it would actually... Uh, cut you off in a certain zoom level. So if I was zoomed out like this and I reduced it down to, let's say, this size, I would be reduced back to just a regular pointer like this one. And that was not terribly helpful because you don't really know what you're painting because you don't know how big your brush is. So now, with the introduction of this much more useful one, we can go ahead and I'm going to add a dodge and burn stack to this. And um, you can check out this script in the description below. I have a link to it as well. It'll pop up here in the corner. Uh, but basically, it just builds my um, dodge and burn stack within my image. And I can go ahead and just add my helper layer and actually start dodging and burning. And so as I do that, you can see that I could be zoomed out like this, see my entire portrait, but still actually, you know, get an idea of how big my brush is and keep scaling it down and still see it, which is great because before you had to zoom in really close on your image to deal with some of the finer areas. And the problem with zooming in is it gives you a different perspective on the area you want to dodge. And so you ended up missing areas that you had to dodge or over dodging. And so it's very important with dodge and burn to actually be at the appropriate zoom level when you're working through it. And that was really not possible before. What we basically had to do, if you watched my previous video on skin retouching in Capture One, was to constantly toggle the mask on and off using the M key to kind of see if we're, we're painting the right area in general. And now we no longer need to do that. We can jump back and forth between our dodge and burn layers, stay at the zoom level that we need. And generally for a portrait like this, that is kind of as close as I'd want to get because I'm not micro dodging and burning or anything like that. Um, anytime I use Capture One for dodging and burning, it's going to be on a you know a portrait that I want to retain a fairly natural look. And so I'm not going to be doing a, you know, a detailed beauty retouch and zooming in super close. Uh, that would be what I would use Photoshop for. So this really kind of makes it a much more useful tool. And even though, you know, seemingly it is a small upgrade, it is one that I've been wanting for the longest time because it just makes it that much easier to do the dodge and burn within Capture One as opposed to doing it in Photoshop for that very simple reason. So you kind of get the idea here. You can go around and as we kind of scale up or down, I can go into um, my contouring. So I can go into a contouring layer and I can quickly transition between, you know, a painting in a very small area of the contour to something that is much larger, all while staying within the same zoom level. So that is really a nice thing to have. So let's go ahead and move on to the other big feature, and that is the healing brush. So let's turn off our Dodge and Burn helper here. And um, the problem before with the healing brush, while it was fairly effective in terms of actually, you know, healing out the areas that we wanted to heal, it was a little bit cumbersome to use because if you needed a different source point, you had to create a new layer. So each layer supported only one source point. So let's say I want to retouch out this little spot here. So it might pick a source point somewhere down here. But then let's say I have to retouch something above the eye, the same source point would actually find itself, you know, in the actual eyeball. And so that would not necessarily look very good um, if I'm trying to retouch an area of skin and the source is an eyeball. So I had to create a new layer and then create a new source point within that particular area. That is no longer the case. So what we can do is just grab our healing brush and start healing just like we would inside of something like Photoshop. So we brush in the area we want to heal and then we just sort of adjust our source point as we want it. And then we can start healing another area. 
and then adjust our source point as we want. So as you can see, it's automatically selecting the source point based on certain heuristics, and it does a fairly good job most of the time. Sometimes it needs to be adjusted, but uh, for the most part, it actually does look pretty good out of the gate. Um, but as you can see, very simple to actually adjust it. And it even works well on something like this. And then going back again to the brush, I can make a very small brush that I can still see at this point. So something you know this small, and just go right over that hair and it's going to go ahead and heal that out for me and it does quite a good job of that. So all of that is within one layer and I can jump over to here, for example, and remove uh, this bit of sensor dust. So we can do that, grab one over here, there's one over here. And so very quickly, you can kind of go through and actually remove the different areas that you need to remove within the skin without having to create multiple layers and each time very easily just kind of adjust. Now, if at any point you are finding these source indicators a little bit distracting, you can either mouse off of the image and they will disappear. Or while you're on the image, you can right click and toggle the display arrows option on or off and they will go away and come back as needed. So obviously while you're healing, you'll probably want to keep them on so you know where those points are. But afterwards, just to check your work, you can always hide them or just mouse off the image. So that is the two main things. Now the other thing is just a nice to have and that is this before after option. So we can just click on that and get an idea for what our image looked like before all of our edits and after all of our edits. So you can see if we move side to side, all of those different changes that we made there, you can see the healing that we've done here, uh, the healing on the subject. And also if you look at this sort of area right up here, you can see the dodge and burn work that we did right up within there making a difference. And so that is just a nice little convenience feature that allows us to easily visualize the fruits of our labor and really get an idea of the impact that we've made on the image. So there are a few other little things like a new logo that's been added for this particular version and a few other um, UI related tweaks. So uh, be sure to check out their website for the full list of details. But those three things that I've showed you here really encapsulate the bulk of this 20.1 release, which again is free if you're already on Capture 120. So go ahead and grab it. And uh, that is all I have for today. So until we see you next time, be sure to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. And bye for now.